My name is Jason Mata. I'm uh, one of the head coaches at Advocates Boxing. This is my son, Jason Mata Jr. Uh, I'm also known as Coach uh, Pops, and my granddaughter calls me Coach or Coffee Pops, so you can call me the way. We're here today because we're going to discuss a little bit about boxing. Uh, we're going to do some um, uh, predictions. Uh, but first, I want to introduce my son, Jason Mata Jr. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. My name is Jason, and I'm a lot of junior. I've been boxing for about 20 years. I'm 25 years old. I'm currently in the USA right now. I'm starting out there in Japan. Uh, I do plan to go pro in the future. Um, I had an amateur record from when I was a young kid, but uh, you know. Hey, okay, so you're in Japan right now. You're talking about possibly going pro in Japan, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Hey, so you start over there, so there's a gym. There's a gym out there. You want to give a shout out to that gym? Yeah, shout out to the TNT Boxing Gym, Takeo Kudanaga, great trainer, great people, they have a great coaching staff out there. So shout out to all y'all there, you guys on the team. And you guys, you did play for the sparring. How, tell us real quick, how, what's, the, what's their style out there? How are you doing for USA, uh, USA Box? Japanese boxers are very technical, they're very in and out, they're very fast. They kind of almost have like a, a little karate style, they're very linear about their movements, but they're, they're, they're amazing warriors, they're amazing fighters, and they're I'm so blessed to be working with each and every one of them. Well, that's what I do. A check hook to the body kind of works sometimes. I think that's what he kind of sticks with a little bit. But we're going to get into, again, this is our first podcast, you know, and we're blessed to have it. Uh, I'm blessed to have my son here with me. As a matter of fact, he's going back to Japan to go back to Navy. But when we do our next one, he's going to be on some kind of a live stream with us. And we'll have other special guests too. Again, thank you guys for joining us. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also feel free to comment. On, uh, on the space below. So we're going to get into this real quick about Canelo and Bogal. You know, I had Canelo winning the first, I had winning the first six rounds, four rounds to two. I think he kind of let out the gas a little bit of the gas pedal. Uh, I kind of winning one more round after that, so I can see how Bogal won, you know, won the fight. But what do you think about that? What do you think about a potential rematch? I think, uh, I think in that first fight, you know, I think Canelo was doing good in the first four or five rounds, maybe to give it to him. I think he was doing really good. Uh, Every time you go up a weight or down a weight, it takes different tolls in your body. I think this time, you know, he fought a guy who was a really good boxer. He had, you know, basic foundation, but he had a lot of speed. He, you know, took it to Canelo, and Canelo, he couldn't get acclimated to it. I think this time coming around, Canelo's probably going to, you know, work more on his uh, endurance, his stamina, you know, trying to come back at him. Uh, the first few rounds is going to tell the whole fight because, you know, Canelo's gonna have to let him already on that this isn't gonna be like the first fight, you know. Let him go know that this time we come in different. But if we can't adjust, then we might see a repeat of the first fight. So let's just see how it goes. Yeah, and guys, feel free to comment on what you guys feel about that fight, you know, who you got won, and what do you think will happen in the rematch. But let's get into Canelo and Triple G. Uh, that's gonna be the third installment of that, uh, or it's gonna be a trilogy. You know, uh, who do you think is gonna win that one? For the Canelo Triple G, I have Canelo winning that fight. Uh, have him winning in a more dominant fashion than he did the last two fights. Only because he, in his last fight, he took, really took it to Triple G. He knows he can take his punch. He's younger still. You know, Triple G's gone over. His past few fights have been a little lackluster. Even though he's gotten the knockouts, he's still doing what he had to do. His opponents are not up to par as to ones that Canelo's been fighting in the past few years. Yeah. And I think, I think Triple G, has been uh, shown that he has a little more open openings in his game now. So I think the Nellis will exploit that. I think he's still gonna bring that youth and he has to make a statement. After this Bull Bull fight, it's been very uh, uh, redemption for him. He has to come back and prove to the people around that he's still Canelo, he's still strong, he can still come out and make make that statement. That's a good point. That's a very good point. So yeah, I think uh, you know Canelo's looking for redemption. Triple D hasn't really had that you know good competition like like Canelo has, and I had a dream that Canelo was gonna knock him out in the seventh round in a dominant fashion. Uh, we're gonna get you know we got we're, we're kind of limited on what we're doing here, but we're gonna give props to Ryan Garcia for his uh, showing his last fight, did very good. But we also gotta give props to our hometown boy, Van Rodriguez, for his championship uh, caliber fighting. He's been he fought the last two fights with world championship caliber. Knock him out. That guy is awesome. He's gonna he's gonna do great things in his career. He's gonna give him a shout out. And we'll get into the Davis and uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna get into Spence and Crawford. Who do you got on that fight? Spence and Crawford. I gotta I gotta go with my fucking text. I gotta go with yeah, Spence. Me too. Spence Spence is woo, Spence is 
best of all. I got, but I do gotta give Crawford his flowers. You know, he is yeah. he is a tremendous fighter. He's one of those once in a lifetime fighters. You know, he has very technical abilities. He's very fast. He gets hard. I mean, yeah. That last fight he had with Sean Porter was I didn't I didn't expect it to go that way. Yeah. You know, I didn't expect Sean Porter. You know, to get to yeah. get stopped like that. That's a good fight. Sean Porter is an amazing, incredible fighter. I didn't expect Crawford to do that. Yeah. But Errol Spence is a strong fighter. He yeah. proved that in his last fight. He could really take it to him. I have a good feeling about Errol Spence. He's really gonna take it to Crawford. I'm yeah. pretty sure Crawford's not going to do the in some aspects, but for sure, Justice can be made for a tremendous fight and make for a great fight and longing yeah. for the books. Yeah, we're, again, we're Texas boys. I mean, we're all about Texas. Yep. We do get props to all the other chaps and wherever they come from, but in this case, I think Spence is going to take them. You know, also give a shout out to the Turkey Hunt in Houston, Texas. That's what we, that's what we met Spence one day, so we don't forget that. We'll wish you all the way, Spence. Uh, we also sure. got uh, Danny Garcia versus Benavides. We think about a 154 pound fight. That's that that fight sounds crazy to me. Danny Garcia, you know, yeah. I believe his last fight was with actually Errol Spence was his last fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so right. you know, Danny Garcia, he's going up the weight, different weight class. I'm pretty sure he's already acclimated to it. Yeah. Um, Benavidez though, he's he's just in his last fight he was a beast. Um, time does tell though. So let's see if Danny Garcia can carry that weight up to 154, and let's see if Benavidez can you know withstand the the the, the, the tell of time. You know. Yeah, I really got Benavides now, you know. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll, I'll honestly. And Benavides brought uh, Crawford one time, right? Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. That was, that was, that was, that was a good that fight. Was, that was a good fight. I'm going to probably take Benavides in that one. And, you know, he's the older brother of uh, the other Benavides, right? Yeah, the yeah. 168. Yeah, those guys are tough. So I, I got to take Benavides in that one. I do want to give a shout out to uh, my boy Christian Anderson for going to be doing some of the production on this. I also want to give a shout out to my wife, Rachel D. Gonzalez. Rachel Gonzalez Mata for doing some reproduction on this. And the last thing is, we're going to attach a link to this, to this podcast. And it's going to be the fight between Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Trinidad. I want you guys to watch that fight and tell me, tell me who, you, who you think really won that fight. I had Oscar De La Hoya win that fight. Uh, and I think that it's, in some cases, that fight was uh, kind of, kind of um, led the, the direction of those two boxers' careers. Then Lohan went on to fight other great fighters, but he had some more losses. And then Trinidad, you know, he got compelled a little bit higher, and he had some great fights as well. But Oscar De Lohan, in my opinion, was still going to be undefeated after that fight. I think he won that fight. Regardless of what happened in the last three rounds, he dominated the first nine rounds, in my opinion. But you guys tell us your opinion. We'll uh, attach that link on to this podcast. And again, thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. I want to put shout out to Dakota Boxing, the sponsor of all the boxing career, the advocate the boxing youth program in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you so much for your guidance. And don't forget MVP, MVP Boxing, Real Talk. We're making t shirts, we're making hats, we're making hoods, hoodies, and everything else. It's coming to you soon. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless.